The late 1940s was a time when men returned from war, expecting to regain their traditional roles in the family. This era saw the first signs of discontent as women who had contributed to the war effort or entered the workforce began seeking more power. By the 1950s, the initial inklings of the feminist movement were taking root. Men started to see challenges to the patriarchal structure from first-wave feminists who were beginning to question their own traditional gender roles. The 1960s brought the second wave of feminism, strongly challenging male authority in all areas of life. Men's ability to network, support, and socialize younger generations of men began to be compromised as women demanded access to men's spaces and support organizations through activism and litigation, breaking up the foundational cycle of men's power. The so-called sexual revolution further blurred gender roles and expectations. Society began to increasingly embrace manufactured terms and ways of dividing men into subgroups based on sexual activity. Men were no longer a unified whole but fractured into sexual identity subgroups. Reductionist terms invented by academics such as heterosexual and homosexual came into common usage and acceptance. Sex for men was no longer just an activity but an all-encompassing identity. In the 1970s, laws were passed that eroded men's exclusive control over private spaces and organizations. Judge Constance Baker Motley's 1978 ruling granted female reporters like Melissa Ludke access to men's locker rooms. Similarly, Title IX of the Education Amendments of 1972 made men-only sports programs at federally funded institutions unlawful. In the 1980s, men's traditional roles were challenged by the decline in manufacturing due to globalization and technology, shifting employment towards service and information sectors. Media also played a part, with films like, Mr. Mom, and shows like, Full House, portraying working women and stay-at-home dads, validating men relinquishing positions of power through example. With the rise of political correctness in the 1990s, men's freedom to express traditional masculine opinions was further restricted. For example, the use of phrases like, politically correct, itself became a hot-button issue, with critics arguing that it stifled free speech and curbed the expression of more traditional or conservative viewpoints. The early 2000s marked the advent of the Internet, shifting how information was exchanged. Unlike legacy media, where advertising requirements fostered media output with majority opinions, the Internet allowed niche and extreme views to thrive. New media's amplification and normalization of gender and sexual identity movements from the 1960s further eroded men's collective identity. The Me Too movement of the 2010s further polarized gender relations, exemplified by high-profile cases such as that of Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein. Accusations against prominent men in various industries ignited intense debates and reactions. Some men felt targeted and unfairly accused, leading to a perceived loss of status and influence. In the early 2010s, complex sexual identity terminology and corresponding expectations for correct usage and conformity in viewpoints emerged. The frequent creation and revision of terms was accompanied by social pressures to accept and adopt these new classifications without question. This demand for orthodoxy in viewpoint and language resembled the rigid ideological conformity that characterized McCarthy-era America, where dissent was suppressed and deviations from accepted norms were often met with condemnation. In the early 2010s, the development of so-called queer studies and certain approaches within feminist studies signaled a narrowing of the intellectual landscape in academia. Critics argued that these disciplines were disconnecting from broader historical and cultural contexts, reducing intricate matters to one-dimensional narratives. This simplification and narrow focus contributed to a cultural environment that often overlooked or misunderstood the complexities of traditional male roles and perspectives. Corporate efforts to diversify and promote equality in the 2010s had tangible impacts on men's representation in leadership positions. For instance, companies like Google and Intel launched initiatives to increase the hiring of women in technical roles, often with targeted goals and specific programs. This shift led some men to feel a sense of displacement and reduced influence, as it appeared to prioritize gender over merit. High-profile lawsuits, such as James Damore's suit against Google, claiming discrimination against conservative white males, 
further highlighted the contentious debate around these policies and their effects on men in the workplace. The rise of cancel culture in the early 2020s significantly affected free expression, particularly for views deemed traditionally masculine. An example of this is the controversy surrounding author J.K. Rowling's comments on gender and sex. Rowling, known for her Harry Potter series, faced backlash when she expressed concerns about the erasure of biological sex and the implications for women's rights. Her remarks were met with a widespread call for her to be cancelled. Government policy further impacted men's perceived status and roles, prompting a sense of displacement and frustration. In the mid-2020s, the military became a focal point of this shift as armed forces were compelled to increase the representation of women in combat roles and leadership positions. Men within the military expressed concerns about the potential dilution of physical standards and the shifting dynamics in traditionally male-dominated environments. The foundations of men's power have been shaken by economic shifts, second-wave feminism, activist litigation, and sexual identity politics. However, the social and economic transformations of our time also present opportunities for men. The shift to a knowledge economy has created new avenues for men to recapture elements of their traditional power and authority. By embracing education, upskilling, and taking on influential and leadership roles in emerging sectors, men can reposition themselves in the changing economic landscape and reaffirm their presence in shaping or reshaping the contemporary world. Knowledge is power. Thank you for watching.